Oh, what's going on fellow YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists and welcome to this, the first in my Call of Cthulhu series. Now I've just picked up the Call of Cthulhu Keeper's Rulebook as you can see there. Um, so this series is going to be about my journey into Call of Cthulhu. Um, as you may already know, I'm a huge D&D fan, so I've always been into Dungeons and Dragons. And I've, when I was a boy, I used to play that to death. And obviously, um, you know, the various changes and additions over the years. Um, but yeah, I've never played Call of Cthulhu, so it would be nice. Like the main difference, I suppose, if we forget the setting and you know where it is. It's um, because it's all about using your using your brain and your mind as opposed to rushing in gung-ho with like um, weapons and swords draw you know all that kind of stuff and being in mighty heroes and that. whereas Call of Cthulhu um, there are different settings for it but essentially you're just ordinary people uh, role-playing in the worlds of HP Lovecraft um, so you could have an everyday job like you know you could be a milkman or a postman or, or, or um, uh, you know a mechanic or something but um, I like that because there's a there's an air of uh, I don't know of connectivity about it. But anyway, not talking about that in this video. I'm talking about this this book that I've got here. Now I'm going to put some pictures up as I as I talk throughout it. It's an amazing book, um, starting with the cover. I and mean, as you can see, it's quite th it's quite a thick book there, and it's got a one of those lovely um, page markers, a uh, bit like you get in the new Warhammer books. Now, opening it up, um, you're confronted with like some great artwork. The, the the pages, the paper that it's printed on, beautiful quality, and it's got a great table of contents, which is always good in a in a role playing book. So, those are pluses. Table of contents, so you can just look through them and you can go straight to the points you want to. Now, you've got chapter one, the introduction, which tells you all about it. It even goes into uh, what is role playing for the new players and it gives you like a, a little bit of a, a, um, a mock game, as it were, by people. Um, so it's got like sections on never played a role playing game before, like they do in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I think most people are aware of the premise of uh, role playing and RPGs now, but you never know, you might get first timers. Uh, so <laughs> I'm currently on making my investigator. Now, an investigator is just for those of you that don't know, if you ever in DD get character sheets, well, in Call of Cthulhu. You get investigator sheets, uh, which is essentially your character sheet. So that's what I'm working on now. Now, on on the advice of someone that is well versed in um, RPGs and Call of Cthulhu, they said the best way to learn a new RPG is to create a few characters, go through the character creation process. So that's what I'm currently doing. Um, tells you a little bit about H.P. Lovecraft himself. It uh, recommends that you read certain um, Lovecraft um, works. So I've got my eye on the complete works of H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, I've read some of it um, when I was at university anyway, but I want to re-familiarise myself uh, with that. Um, but yeah, The Call of Cthulhu, the whole Cthulhu mythos is very intriguing to me. There's, there's like an air of um, menace that it evokes the same kind of menace as the like the old uh, Hammer House of Horror movies used to back in the day when I was a kid and I used to watch them. So at the moment I'm just at the, the part where what the numbers mean and what the different parts of the investigator sheet all mean. Um, then I'll be going into occupation, so you've got to find yourself an occupation which is quite good. So you've got antiquarian, see there's settings, so there's like 1920s America um, there's the pulp setting. There's uh, oh, there's different. There's different setting. You can even play it in modern day times um, if you so wish. Depends on your group, I suppose. But this book gives you 
um, loads of different tables and things for uh, ascertaining what things cost back in the 1920s in America, as an average, of course. Uh, and equipment that you can use and find. I just find, I find this book really, really, really well set out. It's got some, like I say, it's got some gorgeous artwork in. Um, horror stuff like, like you would expect to find in D D, you know. Um lot of sort of occult stuff in here. Um some really creepy monsters and stuff and you know magic and all that kind of thing. Another good thing about this book <coughs> which I love, which not all uh role playing games books have. Excuse me, that's my dog. That's one uh, one reason I, I, I record most of my videos in my um, studio but uh, one thing which is particularly good about this book is it's got an index in the back and it's really well set out as you can see and I find that so helpful if I go back to my um, other some other games I've played like um, Congo some of you may know I play Congo that book is fantastic beautiful pictures and beautifully printed and manufactured but there's no index so an index can be hugely helpful I think it's essential in a role-playing game particularly if you're running the game and you need to find certain things really quickly um, so here we've got Lovecraft Country and Arkham Massachusetts this is a really you know gorgeous stuff and then of course at the back we've got some um, um, investigator sheets and you know it's all laid out beautifully which you can photocopy um, or download the PDFs and just print them off which is what I'm doing um, though at the moment I'm I'm finding it difficult because my printer toner is running out so we'll I'll sort that out though so there you got so the first one uh, the 1920s era investigator or well, you got this one here modern era investigator and the the character sheets or the investigator sheets are slightly different to compensate um yeah so I, I i'm hugely looking forward to this i'm going to be um chatting with a friend of mine soon about you know who we can get to play this and you know what sort of games we can run I, i've got another book on order as well not that it's essential but um, i've got the investigator's handbook coming and i've got my eye on the um the keeper's screen because i believe that comes with a couple of like you know game scenarios that you can play through and then i'll be looking at um actual games um uh, like campaigns and, and and game settings and different things that you can buy for it so this is my journey into call of cthulhu um i hope you um, are happy to come along for the ride with me um, I'll give you my thoughts on it as an experienced I'm an experienced D&D player and I dabble in other games and I have dabbled in other games but D&D was like the mainstay game I've played more than any other I've played that a lot so of course I think as it was like the first one I believe um, I'm, I will use that as the, the kind of yardstick with which to not judge other games by because that wouldn't be fair as such but uh, I can just you know I, I can compare it uh, not that that's going to be good or bad just different I would imagine well things that are different and things are the same so yeah it's quite I got this um, from my local game store I got I picked this book up and it cost me 39 pounds so they're not cheap books and I know a lot of people say oh it's a waste of money paying you know you don't need all the books and just just download the free PDFs and and do that but when you compare it to um, you know like Warhammer and stuff I mean you know the price of these books and how many you get through I mean that's just some of my Warhammer books um, so that's it really um, for this episode and um, I look forward to doing more of these I'm you know the more I read through it the more I'll be able to do and then once I start playing it we'll actually be able to talk about you know more in some more in-depth stuff uh, and I'm looking forward to talking about miniatures and things that as the pulp era professor there which I just arrived today actually from uh, chronoscope bones uh, the old reaper manufacturer so thanks once again remember all brushes elite to war 
I will see you on the next video and uh, look out for more. Bye for now.